Planting is underway for Bill McLeod on his farm in central Nebraska. He's been raising corn and soybeans here his whole life. Back when he started, McLeod says farmers thought differently about the best way to use nitrogen fertilizer to make their crops grow. Everybody kind of understood that a little was good, a lot might be better. You could always put on more, but in the soil, nitrogen fertilizer turns into nitrates that can leach into the groundwater. And in high doses, nitrates are dangerous for health, especially for young children and pregnant women. Unfortunately, decades of old farming habits have left a troubling legacy. In this area, the subsoil is loaded with nitrates from fertilizer. And there's no place for them to go but down, into the aquifer. Here's what's happening. Farmers put nitrogen fertilizer on their fields. In the soil, bacteria convert it into nitrates that are taken up by roots to feed plant growth. But when there are too many nitrates, water from rain or irrigation carries the extra nutrients past the point where roots can reach and eventually to the aquifer below. The aquifer is moving like a slow river. When the nitrates fall into the groundwater, they move too, and they build up. Here in the High Plains Aquifer and others, there are pockets of nitrates pushing far past the legal limit of 10 parts per million. In central Nebraska, a pocket of high nitrate water is flowing right toward the wells where the city of Hastings draws its drinking water. It's a looming problem for the city's residents and for Marty Stenge, the environmental supervisor for Hastings Utilities System. They're five times the drinking water standard. So those are some really areas of high concern for us. Stenge and his team are building a unique line of defense. Basically, we're going to catch the, the nitrates coming into the municipal wells. They'll use strategically placed wells like this one to act almost like a filter for the aquifer, skimming off nitrates as they move toward the city. Stenge knows that nitrates tend to collect on the top of the aquifer. So unlike most wells, this one pumps from the top, middle, and bottom all at once. So this, the top water, the highest nitrates, it'll go off and be treated. Treated, and then that clean water that's, that's retrieved from that treatment process then will be mixed with this bottom water. And go back underground. And it'll go back underground. But you have to pump them all at the same time to make it work. Clean water will be pumped back down into the aquifer, so the high nitrates never reach the wells that supply Hastings residents. High nitrate water left over from the cleanup will be sent to a storage lagoon and used to irrigate and fertilize this field. Nitrates that would be harmful to humans can be safely absorbed by this alfalfa. So as the plants are growing, they will consume up those nitrates. So we're going to take lemons and make lemonade. Stange says Hastings will spend $46 million to complete the system, a lot for a city of just 25,000 people. And if the problem gets worse, they'll have to spend a lot more for a full-scale nitrate removal plant. It's not cheap for large communities either, certainly, but it's often difficult for small communities to put in adequate treatment. Karen Flournoy says pollution from nutrients like nitrates is a nationwide problem, causing blooms of toxic algae from Florida to the Chesapeake Bay to Ohio. It clearly is a national problem. Now, the sources may be a little bit different in other parts of the country. They might have a much higher mix of urban stormwater than we do here, but it's still a significant issue. But engineering only provides short-term solutions. Back in Hastings, if the water is going to be safe long-term, farmers will have to make lasting changes. Farmer Bill McLeod already uses fertilizer differently today compared to when he started. Nowadays, liquid fertilizer that is not that cheap, and so we're trying to watch our pennies and just use what we need to out here. Farmers are motivated by more than money. McLeod and others are being asked to do more, even if it's not by choice. Groundwater districts around Hastings have put additional rules in place to manage fertilizer use. The cloud says farmers have mixed feelings toward the rules. We are doing it, I mean, because we care and everything, and that we're required to do it, yeah, too. And it's for future generations, it's just not us. 
my grandkids are going to be in this area, so they've got to live with the stuff that we're doing out here today. So uh, you know, that doesn't bother me quite so bad then to comply with some of these rules when you think about the future, I guess. McLeod says farmers don't like the extra paperwork or restrictions on how they farm, but he says they do want clean water for their neighbors, their crops, and for their own homes. For Market to Market, I'm Grant Gerlach.